Eastlink TV. Chris Abbott along with Cecil Wright and Mavs Gillis will join us in just a few moments. And Cecil, it's not the playoffs, but it's very close and the game tonight has a lot riding on it. This, this game is going to have huge implications. If Lockview wins, they're in. And uh, I think that they would play the same team, play Auburn again in the first round of the playoffs. That's right. Lockview are coming in at 4-2 and two and a win. They play the first place team in the other division. We'll get to that in just a few moments when we look at the standings. But you want to look at some of the players off the top tonight. We had Tristan Hyde on earlier this year. And now we get a look at Chase Tynes, another multi-sport athlete here in Nova Scotia. Well, Chase Tynes, as we know, last time we saw him, he was uh, winning a gold medal or helping Nova Scotia win a gold medal in the under-17 battle basketball championships he hurt his ankle it was a bad sprain he tells me but he's 100 percent ready to go and i'm really looking forward this is the first opportunity we've had to see him on the football field chase plays both sides of the ball wide receiver and defensive back and we're told that he's pretty much just as good as football as he is with basketball and on the other side of the things for the lockview dragons there is number eight Joe Doucette and we're told by some of the people around the field that he is also a multi-talented player. He's an exceptional athlete, tremendous speed. When this kid gets his hands on the football, he's a threat to take it to the house every single time. So keep your eyes on number eight, Joe Doucette. Also might expect to see him on the kick return team as well. Joe Doucette will keep an eye on him as we go forward tonight. Now, as we were talking about previous to that, the standings and things are tight. Here we look at the Division II Nova section. You see there, Auburn is on top at 6-0. and They've got their ticket punched to the playoffs, so not quite as much on the line for them tonight, although the undefeated season is still there. Plus, you want to send a message, just in case you do meet Lockview uh, next weekend, that... You know, regardless of what happens this game, there's going to be some hard hitting going on and sending a message that way. And when you look at the Scotia section of Division Two, there you see right now sitting in third place tonight is Lockview. Now, if they win tonight, they'll have the same record as JL. They'll get through on the tiebreaker. And, of course, you see Sackville High in first place in this section, and they dominated a couple of games here on Eastlink TV. I'd be surprised, Chris, if we don't see a whole lot of people from JL here because they'll be rooting hard for Auburn. It should be a good one. We're really looking forward to it. It's got that fall playoff feel. And when we come back, it's kickoff here from the Bedford Hammonds Plains all-weather turf field. I'm Levi Marshall. Mining is a vital part of Nova Scotia's economy, but what do you really know about it? Watch Mining Rocks only on Eastlink TV. Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Mondays at 6.30 p.m. throughout October on Eastlink TV Channel 10 and HD 610. Available only to Eastlink customers. When visiting Halifax, smart travelers choose Future Rails. They offer comfortable rooms, the Redwood Grill, and conference spaces for up to 125 people. A great location with tons of parking. Future Rands, Halifax Hotel and Conference Center. Proud to support this program. The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlinktv. Lots on the line here at our game of the week on Eastlink TV. Mavs Gillis had a chance to chat with the coaches before this big matchup. Chris, I'm wearing three layers down here. It's that cold. And for Lockview to have a shot tonight, they have to make sure that the Auburn running game doesn't get to the third layer of their defense. That's trying to contain DeBron Lewis Mayo. He is the running back for Auburn that they really have to key on Lockview. Expect them to throw the ball 60% pass, 40% run. Coach Villardo for Auburn drives very, very uh, complimentary about this Lockview team they're about to play. Of course, he coached a lot of them, including some of the coaches when he was uh, the head coach of the Dragons in years past. Guys? 
Well, thanks very much, Mavs. And now we're going to look at tonight's weather. Very ominous moon in the background and an ominous looking temperature. Four degrees Celsius, 20 kilometer hour winds and Cecil. It's a chilly night, but it's a beautiful night for an important football game. It is. And, you know, as long as the wind stays down, you know, that's the big key here tonight, uh, especially for a team like Lockview that wants to put the ball in the air as much as they normally do. And right now it's, uh, I don't know, the winds aren't too, too terribly blustery. So uh, it should be a great night for football. Mockview won the toss, have deferred to the second half, and they will kick to the north end of the field to the Auburn Eagles. Lockview Dragons wearing white and black with the breast cancer awareness pink socks for the month of October, and the Auburn Eagles in the familiar teal and black. We're just, we're waiting for the uh, the chain crew to oh, here uh, they come. <laughs> get set up. <laughs> Some Lockview High volunteers by the looks of things, or voluntold, I'm not sure. But they'll be on the chains tonight, and uh, definitely voluntold. They're there with the paint on. They were, they were here to be fans. And they got recruited. <laughs> Can't have a game without them, though. Very, very important role they play. Absolutely. All right, so they're getting in place. There's some of the fans that are in attendance here tonight. It is chilly, but they were having fun. There was a happy birthday message sent out during the pregame. The fans were over there singing away. So good atmosphere, and away we go. A line drive kick inside the 20, and Chase Tynes on the kick return. Tynes with a few moves gets himself five or six yards, and the Auburn Eagles will take over in their own end of the field. Pretty good kick coverage that time by the Lockview Dragons. Chase Tynes, uh, he made some moves, but he really had no room to maneuver. Here comes Myron Willis, the quarterback for the Eagles. We're in number seven. And it'll be first and 10 from the 26. Again, they're just uh, communicating with the new chain gang. They'll get that sorted out after a couple of series. Myron Willis on first down. He throws right, flat, received. First down and more. Asante Spivey out the center field. Huge first play for the Eagles. Well, that's the way you want to start off a ball game if you're the Auburn Eagles. Uh, quick little pass to the right. Got a couple real nice blocks here. Right there by that wide receiver number 81. That's Justin Glosson with a, a real nice kick out block. And real nice speed by Asante Spivey. He's tackled out of bounds by the 12th grade safety, Jonathan Cox. Another first down for the Eagles. Quarterback keeps. And it's going to be seven or eight yards for Myron Willis. Nice straight arm at the end of that run, too. Uh, just push the defender right to the turf. So here's a look at the rest of the Eagles offense brought to you by Sports Talk, 5.30 Fridays and 1 p.m. on Saturdays on East Link TV. Some familiar names. We've got Barry Dubai son, Dubai son, pardon me, on the line. Barry not refereeing this game, although we do see a lot of him. Second and five from the 49. Willis hands off, and it's gonna be the first carry for DeBron Lewis Mayo, and he's gone for 15 and a first down. Very impressive so far. What a great first series for Auburn. They've gotta be thrilled with the way they're moving the ball with relative ease. Here is the Lockview starting defense. There's four people with the last name Cox on this team. 98 and 24 you see right there. And number 98 is Katie Cox, grade nine. Another 
toss for Lewis Mayo left. He avoids one tackle. A second, finally, he's taken down on a second effort by Shane Taylor. Yeah, good pursuit by the Lockville defense that time. Um, limiting the ball carrier for the first time here. You see the linebacker coming across. Running back kind of leaned under the big hit, but uh, he held him to short yardage. Second and long for the Auburn Eagles. That could have been a fumble. We get a whistle there. Incomplete passes. The call, and folks, you see on the bottom of your screen a message from Eastlink TV. The CRTC undertakes a review every so often of community television and regulations surrounding the industry. For those of you who are viewers with us, of course, you'll understand that Eastlink TV will fall into that category. And we're asking our viewers to voice their support by heading to eastlink.ca slash Eastlink TV and let the CRTC know how important our station is to you. Punt from the Auburn Eagles. Picked up at the 10. There's Joe Doucette on the return. He'll be out of bounds around the 20. Now here's that previous play. Now is this a, a lateral, a backward pass? Yes, definitely. Happened right in front of us. I was really surprised to hear the whistle. I heard a couple of calls of fumble, but a break for Lockview, or pardon me, a break for Auburn. As we get a look at the Lockview starting quarterback, Matt Babineau, grade 11 student for the Dragons. Well, he's going to be looking for uh, Joe Doucette, number eight, early and often. Fumbled snap, and Babineau will pounce on the loose ball. It'll be a loss of a down. Here's a look at the rest of the Lockview Dragons offense. Also brought to you by Sports Talk, 5.30 on Fridays on Eastlink TV. And again, 1 p.m. on Saturday with the increased high school section on that show leading into our 2 p.m. high school sports presentation. Sam and Daniel Cox anchoring the left side of the offensive line for Lockview. Grade 12 and grade 10. Babineau looks left. And that is into triple coverage. And that's going to be complete on the left side. I didn't think he came up with that, but Tyler McKay looked and hung on to that ball. Yeah, he took a big hit, too, uh, but still Fortune was able to hang on to the football there. Got a timeout call coming from the Lockview sideline as the punt team wasn't really on its toes there, and they're still trying to get things together. A little yeah. bit of confusion there. The coach is probably being driven crazy right there, having to use a timeout so early in the first quarter. Hey, hey. Defensive line and linebackers, let's stay wide. Watch the fake, okay? Stay off the kicker, okay? Set the edge. Tykeem, set, Tykeem, where are you? Set the edge, okay? Watch the fake. Okay, watch the direct snap to the up backs. Nathan, okay, watch the direct snap to the up back, okay? Make sure this thing gets off. Now get in the air, get up field. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And Coach's iPhone might have been ringing there during the, uh, during the timeout, but he fought through it. <laughs> it's just, I have no words. <laughs> He's a busy man. Hey. This is going to be a, a prime opportunity for Auburn to get some real good field position here. There's Tyler McKay back for the punt after he had the reception as well. Gets it out to their 50. It's picked up there by Lewis Mayo. He'll get a few yards on the return and decent field position to start for sure for the Auburn Eagles. Now let's see if, if Lockview is able to contain Auburn. They really moved the ball quite well the first three the first three times they uh, had the ball. A lot of pressure right off the back on the Dragons deep. Good shot right into the eyes of Myron Willis. Lots of intensity and determination here. Players on both sides of the ball, they know what's at stake here tonight. Well, 
Davis. Quick toss and Spivey on the run. He's wide open. And Asante Spivey might have gotten even further, except it looked like he fell on his own accord just inside the 30. Well, Spivey's got a lot of speed and quickness. Uh, he's shifty. And uh, he's also been the beneficiary of some real good blocks. Blocks up front. You see uh, the middle of that offensive line doing a good job. They sealed the edge. And I, I think he just blew a tire right there around the 30-yard line. Yeah, just as he was trying to avoid Brett Howard, Howard disrupted him enough to turn off his timing. And there's actually going to be a penalty bringing this all the way back to midfield. I'm assuming that was a hold. So we first and 20 now for the Eagles. That's a great shot right there. From Tony to Coast. Same play. Post up swap job Tuesdays at 7.30. And they're not going to want to swap out that tackle by Shane Taylor as he got in. And it's third and a mile for the Auburn Eagles. Second and a mile make that. Well, great job by Shane Taylor. Uh, there you see him on the edge. Beats the block and goes in pretty much to make the heroic tackle solo. Asante Spivey, the loss of five. Two, down, Auburn. Right a penalty is declined. Right Second down. Well, so far, it seems like the Lockview Dragons are up to the task here defensively. And getting through the first series is big for Lockview. They know what's on the line, and Auburn came out hard and heavy. Now, hopefully, for them, they'll be able to settle into the game a little bit more. Second and 20. This time, it's Lewis Mayo on the toss. Wow. Look at that acceleration by Lewis Mayo as he switches sides to the field. He's got the first down. What an unbelievable cutback. I thought that play was going to be a sweep around left. He just took it off tackle and cut right back across the middle of the field. Look at this. Big hole there. Cuts against the grain and is able to pick up a huge first down for the Auburn Eagles. DeBron Lewis Mayo, 35-yard run on second and long. Now Lockview have a player hustling to get off the field. Too late. It's going to be a flag on the play. Free one for Auburn. And they're going to get a first down anyway. Lewis Mayo is inside the 10. Well, they'll simply decline this penalty. And you can't give free plays to a 6-0 team right now. No, and it's easy to see why they're 6-0. I mean, this is quite a proficient offense here. <laughs> they're moving the ball relatively easy against a pretty pretty solid team they're going to pick up the flag but really makes no difference one way or the other what are you trying to tell me are you telling me chris that the player was off the field at the time the ball was snapped i'm not trying to tell you nothing i am trying to tell you that auburn is first and 10 from the 10. right up the middle oh hard contact Great job by the Lockview Dragons defense. Nowhere to go that time for Tykeem Williams. There was some, uh, some hard hitting on that line and Williams took a good shot right there. Wow, good work by the Dragons. Can they do it again? Well, they, they've got no choice. Uh, they've got to at least try to hold them to three points here. So this play is huge. Alex Pickram, fumble, that might be recovered by the Dragons, we'll see what the officials say. I saw a Lockview player signal that they had the ball. Lockview ball, and their sideline erupts. I think it all stems from the handoff, Cecil. Yeah, he never had it there, you can see it was on his hip. Never had both hands on the ball, and there you see Lockview pounce on the, the loose football. Well, you heard Mavs talk about it. Lockview said they can't let the running game get past their second layer, and both times the second layer was huge just then. 
I know DeBron Lewis may have probably feel sick over that fumble and uh, be interesting to see how he handles it next time uh, they have possession. I'm sure he could taste the end zone. Running play on first down. Short gain for the Dragons. Shane Irvin, the fullback, had the ball that time. You gotta love any head coach who wears a Patriot hat, don't you? You guys and your Patriots. <laughs> I have to rub it in at every opportunity. Babineau rolls left, airs it out. Complete on the left sideline. Again into double, triple coverage. And again, a reception. Tyler McKay. Well, here you see the quarterback, Babineau, like fakes to nobody. Both these receivers were already gone when he did the, the hand fake. Puts the ball right uh, pretty much on the money. That was Nick Collins on the reception, pardon me, 88, not 80. Good job with the Lockview receivers so far. Well, gets them out of uh, the shadow of their end zone. It's a three or four yard run on first down. By Riley Palopel. Here's a look at the Auburn Eagles defense. I haven't had a chance to show that graphic as of yet. Brought to you by Sports Talk, 5.30 on Fridays on East Link TV. And of course, almost everybody is going both ways. So keep an eye on DBs, Willis, Chase Times, and of course, Mayo. Another pass left for Collins. And they're inside Eagles territory, and Babineau and Collins have got something clicking early. Well, they do, and they know that Auburn, and quite wisely so, they're going to key on set. If somebody is going to make some plays, they're going to try to make sure that it's anybody but number eight in white. And for that reason, Nick Collins is off to a great start. So Myron Willis, the quarterback, also playing defensive back, he makes the tackle. There's Palapo on first down. He's pulled down in the backfield. Tackled by number 50, Kevin Trites. Well, he just shot the gap and uh, made a beautifully uncontested tackle. Fights off the blocker and comes in to make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Anytime a, a lineman can make a, a tackle for a loss, that's something to brag about. Fullback Shane Irvin had to pick which guy to block. And Trites got in there. Flag on the play. Babineau escapes. Now he's going to run. He's going to slide in about three yards shy of the first down. Interesting to see what we got for a penalty here. Signals offside. They moved the against box. Auburn. They did get to Babino pretty quickly. Eagle. Number 72, Auburn offside, up five yards. Repeat second down. So they're going to take back that run that was shy of the first down. Now that they're going to go second and nine after the. First down tackle for a loss. Babineau, though, as we've seen, great escapability as well as an ability to throw the ball. However, they got to him that time. That'll fall incomplete. And he wisely threw it away. Uh, tried to throw it in the direction of a, of a receiver. Looks like Cameron Grace got in and got a hand on Babineau before he could throw right there. Yeah, good play by Grayson and good play by Babineau to uh, avoid taking a big loss. Right now, it's a, it's a battle of field position and Lockview can't afford to get in that battle with Auburn because they've shown quick strike ability. Okay, to punt and he gets a good one away. That's going to roll back into the 20. Kirstead on the return, although he's going to get negative yards. 
Big job on the tackle by number 52, Liam McCormick. Well, so far, so far, Chris, we get the makings of a beauty here. This, this is really going to be outstanding high school football here. So Myron Willis and the Auburn Eagles will take over on the 20. A beautiful couple of punts from the foot of Tyler McKay. Grade 11 student for Lockheed. First down, Willis looking for something over the middle. Intercepted. Shane Taylor off the redirect, and the Lockview Dragons take over. Well, that is every single defensive player, including linemen, practice what's known as the tip drill every day in practice. And the tip drill is when the ball is tipped up in the air, like you're going to see right, right there, and the defensive player reacts to the ball and goes to make the interception. Classic tip drill right there. Jonathan Cox was disappointed in himself, thought he had lost the opportunity. Gets bailed out by Shane Taylor. Now Babineau looking quickly. Doucette catches it over the middle. Great hands by Doucette. Just reached up and snatched that out of midair. Good pass by Babineau. What an opportunity for the Lockview Dragons. We're going to send it to sideline for Mavs. Most exciting play in football, the interception. And Shane, it, it was basically a tip drill there. Yeah, Take us through the play. One. That was a lucky one for sure. Uh, normally playing DN, you know, not used to that kind of deal. Got lucky that time. When a DN gets the ball in his hand, it's an exciting thing. Uh, what's your thoughts so far on their front, uh, their front line? Uh, they're pretty good, but I mean, they're that fast. They like holding. I think we got him. Thanks, Shane. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Guys? Thanks, Mavs. Confidence and excitement on that Dragon sideline right now. Oh, why not? They've, uh, they've played outstanding defense the last two times. Uh, got their team in position maybe to score. Palapo ran into one of his blockers on that last play during the interview. But there was another offside that time against Auburn Drive. So it's first and five. And you talk about the quick strike of Auburn, but Babineau and his receiving court, they're just as good as any we've seen. Babineau over the middle, and it's going to be touchdown Lockview. Mark Firth gets his number called for the first time, and he's in for six. Well, great job by Lockview, first of all. Kudos to the defense for putting him in position, and uh, how about this job by the offense? Look at that, right in stride, untouched into the end zone. Boy, this is our first look at Matt Babineau, and he can distribute that ball. The fourth receiver he's found so far tonight. Extra point is tacked on by Mitchell Wiswell, and the Dragons, with their season on the line, are on the board first. Well, the other thing I like about Babno, he's got a little bit of shake and bake to his game, too. He's not, uh, he's pretty elusive back there when uh, a defensive lineman did have an opportunity to get his hands on him. He quite intelligently got rid of the football so he didn't take the sack. Uh, there was another time where he uh, kept the ball around the right end, made a nice little fake on a defensive end and uh, ran for a few yards. So he's got a nice game. So nearing the end of the first quarter, the Lockview Dragons lead by seven. And here's Mavs with Mark Firth. Nice little drag route there. What were you seeing on that play? All I saw was open field. I just took it to the house. With seven nothing, what, how big is this first score for you guys with your season on the line? It's all, it's everything. Our season's on the line. We got to win, and there's no going home after this. Thanks, Mark. Best of luck. You too. Guys? Good luck, Mavs. <laughs> I do that all the time when people like, have, like at the airport have a nice flight. You, you too. too. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. I'm working at Tim Hortons. <laughs> Kickoff return to the 44 by Arian Goodell. Well, interesting to see how Auburn reacts to uh, this little bit of adversity, you know, the undefeated team, the undefeated season, and here you are uh, behind in the first quarter. Of course, you know, there's still plenty of game to go, but uh, you certainly think Coach Villardo has something up his sleeve here. 
First down for the Eagles, it'll be a run. Breaks one, breaks two. Now Tycoon Williams, taken down hard with a five yard gain. I tell you, there's an awful lot of running right there for five yards. He was upended at the end of this play. Watch this hit right here. Ma Max Humphreys, pardon me, and Jared Irvin get in on the tackle. He pops up. Good thing to see you there from Williams. Yeah, and let the crowd know that that was nothing. Run on second down and short of first down is DeBron Lewis Mayo. Big stop for the Dragons. Massive stop for the Dragons. And I'm looking at the Auburn coach and he's sending in somebody. They're not going to kick. They're going for this. The KO Williams, a slot back. Comes in for Justin Gloss on the wide receiver. Big play early. Attempted third down conversion. And he gets it. DeBron Lewis Mayo. He's out of bounds around the 40. Everything indicated pass, and then the Dragons were fooled by the Eagles. Well, the Eagles' running game has been superb thus far. The only, the only mistake they've made is a, is a fumble early on, but you see, once again, good interior blocking by the Eagles' offensive line, and uh, Lewis May, of course, with great speed and quickness, beats everybody to the outside. First down from the 42. Willis, another quick toss for Spivey. He's got five, he's got seven. And Spivey is brought down, but again, another good run for Asante Spivey, number 20. Their running game is eating up chunks of yardage here, and uh, you have to wonder whether or not the Lockview Dragons defense will wear down at some point if if they continue to have to cover these offensive backs like like they have been. I mean, so far I'm very impressed by the Eagles' backfield. Lined up in the backfield now, Williams and Lewis Mayo. Lewis Mayo again. Another fumble. And that's gonna bring up third and six. DeBron Lewis Mayo, you can see the frustration in his face there. Yeah, he had it. He had it to the outside. And the defender got his hand on the ball just enough to knock it away. For, forced fumble by Dakota Nickerson. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. I love it. I love this third down stop, man. This is great. Willis looks over the middle. Complete. That's going to be pretty close, if not a guaranteed first down, Tykeem Williams. i got to say how surprised I am, first of all, that they, they threw the ball, but the way their running game's been going, but it's a nice play. Ball is right on the money. And it is a first down for the Auburn Drive Eagles. Their sixth of the quarter, as you see the stat on top of the screen. It's been a good quarter of football season. It's been exciting. Certainly has. And you know, if you were just tuning in, looking at the uh, the yardage, you would think that Auburn's probably up seven zero. Willis. Willis looking for an option. Doesn't see one. Starts to run. Now he's in trouble. And Myron Willis is out of bounds. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. The Auburn Drive Eagles trail the Lockwood Dragons 7-0 Nova Scotia High School football on Eastlink TV. SetYouFree.ca presents QMJHL Friday Night Hockey on Eastlink TV. Live from Center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia, the Valdor Forers visit the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles on Friday, October 30th at 7 p.m. on East Link TV, Channel 10, and HD 610. Available only to East Link customers. 
When visiting Halifax, smart travelers choose Future Ribs. They offer comfortable rooms, the Redwood Grill, and conference spaces for up to 125 people. A great location with tons of parking. Future Ends, Halifax Hotel and Conference Center. Proud to support this program. The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlink TV. I love these guys. I love Bob and Jack over there. I even love their best friend, Steve-O, the Joker. So who's it going to be this time? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll get one of you. I always do. Make death wait. Please donate to fund life-giving research. Because heart disease and stroke take one in three before their time. Our Eastlink TV player profile, DeBron Lewis Mayo. We already seen him make a couple plays on his feet. Now he's in the backfield of the defensive secondary as a safety. And you say, he's a young guy. Why is his favorite player Walter Payton? Well, he's a running back originally from Chicago. So you got to respect that, right, Cecil? Yes, you certainly do. Walter Payton, one of the greatest of all time. DeBron Lewis Mayo. And you could see the athleticism in him when he was warming up before the game. He was jumping around there that time, probably trying to stay warm. <laughs> Second and 12 for the Eagles. Here is DeBron Lewis Mayo, and he's taken down hard by Alex Pickram, the grade 12 linebacker. Pickram, number 42, has been all over the ball defensively tonight. Very well, impressed. That's the second big hit that Pickram has made. And there you see it was kind of a, a bad snap. So I think that kind of impeded the play a little bit for Auburn. Lockview coaching staff before the game, I asked them who has been your top performer this year. He said, take your pick between Doucette and Pickram. You can see why. No argument from me. Third and long again, Willis is crunched, and that's going to fall incomplete. Dakota Nickerson got through to the quarterback that time. And I want to tell you, he put a lick on him. And the Auburn staff was looking for a roughing the passer call. Great job. Great job shutting down. Matt Bavino and the Lockview Dragons will take back over. There's another look at that last play, and Nickerson. Untouched. And Took him to the turf. Brett Howard on the coverage as well. Making it very difficult down the KO Williams. Babino. Here's it out to the right. Nearly picked off. Oh. It'll be a seven yard gain on the reception for Chris Malone. I don't know if we got that on replay, but the defensive back would have had a pick six. It went right through his hands, <clears throat> and the receiver caught it. Watch this. Right through his hands, <laughs> off the receiver's shoulder pad, and he comes up with the reception. Tough break for Asante Spivey. You don't see that every day. And Chase Tynes in on the tackle. There he is, number two. Babino on second and short, and he's tackled. One more time, Tykeem Williams. Well, great defensive play right there, and that's going to force Lockview to punt the football and Auburn should get the ball in decent field position. Babino looked around for a couple of options. You can see there as he got wrapped up, but then decided, hey, I better go down here. Well, you can't take too long to make up your mind uh, in this game. You get the ball, you got to make short precision passes. Get the ball out of your hand quickly as quarterback. Tyler McKay has been good at the punt so far tonight. There's another one higher than he has been doing but still gets it around the 50-yard line inside Auburn territory. Seven nothing, the Lockview Dragons lead. Season and playoff hopes are on the line. They need a victory tonight. And they're playing like it. Well, there's a sense of urgency on, on the part of Lockview for sure, but like you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, there's no way Auburn wants to lose this game to Lockview uh, and 
uh, risk that undefeated record at this point in the season. They want to prove that they're the top dog in this division. And in order to do it, though, they're, they're going to have to hang on to the football, and that seems to be their only problem so far. First and 10 for Willis and the Eagles. Willis drops back under pressure. Throws that one out of bounds. And we've got a flag in the backfield. It's going to be an illegal block against the Eagles. block block below the waist number one Auburn that's a 10 yard penalty repeat first down so that's Lewis Mayo who blocked low he's trying to protect his quarterback there yeah that's a dangerous block right at the knee of an oncoming defender that's uh, that's tough I actually heard the Auburn sideline send apologies down to the Lockheed sideline Look at that run. Spivey, oh, he's tackled hard right in front of our broadcast location. 42 and 24, that's Jonathan Cox and Alex Pickram in on the tackle. But great job by Spivey. He broke two other tackles as it was and gained some, some big yardage on this little swing pass right here. Breaks this one. Thought he was down here. He, he stayed on his feet somehow. Great job by Spivey. Second and four. Well, this toss left for Lewis Mayo. He's running out of room, and he's going to come up shy of the first down. Brett Howard again forcing him out of bounds. Got to be a little careful the way he's uh, carrying this ball. Look at him in one hand like that. Switches to the left hand. That's that's dangerous. And uh, at the next level, he'll be chastised for that. Second and three. Pardon me, third and three. Eagles are two for three on third downs. They're going for it again. Clearly, they don't really like kicking the ball. <laughs> Fumble. And it's a turnover, whatever way you look at it. And the Dragons will take over around center field. Like I said, Chris, that seems to be their bugaboo, their Achilles heel is uh, putting the ball on the turf. That's the third time today. See the snap. And yeah, the handoff was late. Or the running back was early. Take your pick. I think the quarterback just dropped the ball. Yeah. Williams was not expecting that ball. He had his hands on his chest. First down run for the Dragons. Oh, big hit. But a nice run from Peter Block, I believe it was. Could have been Shane Irvin. I couldn't tell if it was 21 or 23. Well, certainly, uh, whoever it was, it was good yardage on the first down. Oh, I was wrong again. It was 20. It was Palapo. Nice hit. Let's look at the numbers from Matt Babineau. 6 of 7 for 47 yards on that touchdown, which was off the interception. Second down. Babineau fakes the handoff. Now running. He's in trouble. And he's brought down right around the line of scrimmage by Jonathan Kerstev. That was real good defense out there by Auburn. I thought that Babineau had room to escape. But he cut right back into two or three Auburn defenders, and there you see the shoestring tackle by Jonathan Kirstead. And if Kirstead didn't get him, Camden Fraser was right there waiting. Third and seven. Back to punt is Tyler McKay. High snap. McKay gets away a line drive. 
Oh, and gets a great roll. Lewis Mayo is going to have nowhere to go here. No yards, flag is down. Look at that athleticism, the way he jumped over his down teammate. Wow. He's lucky that down teammate didn't make a move to get up. <laughs> or else he might have had a, a very, very injured and talented running back. Let's go, hurry up. No yards? No yards? No yards, Lockview, number one, seven. That's a five yard penalty, first down. We, we've seen it, well, oh, never mind. <laughs> Best thing for me to do is just be quiet here before I get myself in trouble. Well, all I'm saying is I don't know the difference between a five yard and a 15 yard no yards penalty. Let's we'll see if we can get an explanation of how Willis, here's it up, picked off. Jonathan Cox. The fourth turnover already for the Auburn Drive Eagles. This time a Jonathan Cox interception, the second of the night thrown by Myron Willis. And there has been two fumbles and two interceptions. They actually make it three fumbles because Lewis Mayo recovered one. Cox was wide open here for this. Yeah, but the safety is just back there baiting. Uh, playing a zone defense like that. Babinock, he's Straight. under pressure. Straight oh, great athleticism to pick that off by Palapo. Now he smells the end zone. Touchdown, Lockview. No flags on the play. That's going to count. That was just an excellent piece of execution by an offensive line in a very, very talented offensive team. The screen pass is a huge weapon if done correctly. And look at look at that line. Just get out in front. Just enough. Nice big offensive tackle in 52. Uh, Liam McCormick with a, a nice block out there. They try for the two-point conversion, doesn't connect. Yeah, Daniel Cox and Liam McCormick really leading that block, making it easy for Riley Palapo. So it's going to be touchdown Spivey, then the incomplete two-point conversion, but here's the touchdown. Watch this block here. Uh, it was just out of our picture just a little bit, but... Uh, And they had the receiver wide open on the fake, and uh, you know, if the pass is on the money, that's an easy two points. Here's Mavs with Riley Palapo. Fantastic screenplay set up there. It's all about time with the screenplay. Take us through the execution of that. Uh, I had to come up, fake block for a bit. I saw that my right guard, uh, Daniel, pushed the guy in. So I gave him a little shove to sell it. And then right there I knew <laughs> they were over pursuing, so I just looked over. I saw my right guard pick up the linebacker. I jumped on my, ta my, uh, my right tackle's butt and threw him to the end zone. <laughs> the offensive line really executing their uh, What can you say while you're blocking on that play? Oh, it was perfect. That was honestly like, better than we've ever practiced here. Thanks, Riley. Best of luck. Thank you. Guys? Thanks so much to both you guys. And got to love Riley Palapo's enthusiasm that time, Cecil. I love when he said, I jumped right on my offensive tackle's butt and rode him into the end zone. That's, that's great. That's awesome. Hey, who says you don't learn in athletics? He just went through about a minute of things that he saw in four seconds. That's amazing. And then went over and gave props to his teammates. I, I love that. That's teamwork. First down for the Auburn Eagles, trailing by 13 here in the second quarter. Willis, hand off, two yard gain for Tykeem Williams. Well, the Lockview Dragons defense certainly has stiffened. I mean, we've got an injured dragon. Well, that does not look comfortable at all.
got to got to say, Chris, I'm a, a, a bit surprised uh, because on the first possession, Auburn moved the ball very, very well. Uh, they took it all the way down the field before they fumbled away a scoring opportunity. Uh, in Lockview's first possession, they, they didn't do too much, but then there was a, a an interception that Lockview was able to capitalize on. And here's the, the second interception, I believe. Yes. That's Jonathan Cox leading to this touchdown for Riley Palapal. There you see him riding his, ta <laughs> riding his tackle into the end zone. Big number 52, Liam McCormick. Still have player down. I haven't seen the number yet. You hate to see injuries, especially in what's been such an entertaining game thus far. And I think it's Alex Pickram that is slow to get up, and that would be a huge loss for the Dragons if he can't continue. Well, he's setting up, so that's a, a positive sign at the very least. Lockview already today, this week, they lost Hayden Rines in practice. Uh, pardon me, Josh Felix in practice, and they had lost Hayden Rines and Sam Karecki earlier in the season. All on the defensive side of the ball, and this would be another. Let's see if we can get a look at it here. There he is. He comes in with his head down. And good way to get a concussion there. You take it. Had people stepping on him. Looks like his right shoulder to me. His right arm. Yeah, possibly a collarbone. And when you hit like he does, yeah, you can see now as he's walking off, he's that old AC joint again. So see if we can get an update on Alex. We'll see if he comes back into the game right now. Doesn't look very good. So the Lockview depth will certainly be tested here now defensively. And certainly that, you know, along with the other losses, they certainly can't afford to uh, go without Alex Pickering. He's their big grade 12 linebacker. Uh, one of their hardest hitters. Second and seven, now they're gonna run right to Pickham's old spot. Another fumble, and it's recovered. DeBron Lewis Mayo had that stripped, and the Dragons will recover. And again, Dakota Nickerson is in making things happen. Looked like Tyler McKay on the recovery. Well, very opportunistic defense. They're all going after the ball now. And here you see it knocked out of his hands right there by Dakota Nickerson. McKay was already on the ground after the attempted strip, and the ball rolls right to him. First down, Babineau over the middle, complete for Doucette. Doucette with yards after the catch, and he's out at the 30. Some real nice blocks on the outside that he was able to uh, capitalize on as well. A little bit of a spring in the step of the Dragons right now. Lockview with already 13 points off turnovers, looking to make it more. Big blocks. A couple of there on the outside by Nick Collins. Babineau throwing again. This nice. time it's two Collins. Nice move by Collins. Nick Collins. Make the hit. Finally down at the five. Auburn went, the Auburn defensive back went after the football. Not sure if he got it. Bring the threes are getting together. It's turned over. Auburn came up with the ball. You can see, uh, you'll see on the replay here. First of all, great move right there by Collins. Spin to the outside. But you'll see one of the defenders go after the ball right there. And looks like he's able to wrestle it away from Collins. That's DeBron Lewis Mayo after all. He's tired of dropping it. He tried to rip it back into his own hands and he succeeded. 
First down run, and Lewis Mayo is taken down with about a five yard gain. Second down Eagles, big play in this game. Lewis Mayo, flag is tossed. That's gonna be a face mask penalty on DeBron Lewis Mayo. Now, will they decline it? Probably, I would. Although you're sending them back to their goal line. Unnecessary roughness, horse caller, number 80, walk you up 15 yards, first down. Well then, <laughs> I didn't see that, I saw the face mask. A lot of times, they'll let offensive players get away with that because they're not grabbing the mask. They just put their hand off to ward them off. Wow. Break there for the Eagles. Huge break. Because we've even seen it go both ways. They call each penalty. They wash. This is going to be first down for the Eagles. Willis again with that toss play for Spivey. Spivey is the only one that can't stop. He's got a first down and more. Pushed out of bounds by Brett Howard. Well, they certainly have found something on their, their running game uh, on the wide sweeps. Although I gotta tell you, I'm a little scared at that toss like that sometime. To just bounce right off his chest pad, is that That's what you're right. thinking? Yeah. That's right. I, I much prefer the handoff. It's safer, although <laughs> tonight we've seen some evidence to the contrary. Myron Willis and the Auburn Eagles, first and 10 from the 45. Willis, again, a bit of confusion on the handoff. And a dive from DeBron Lewis Mayo to try and get some extra yards. They were extremely fortunate that they didn't turn the ball over there. Uh, it was only because the Lewis, Lewis Mayo was able to gather it in, but he's really got to concentrate on carrying that football a little bit closer either in the crook of the arm or closer to his chest. Another handoff, and the run is stuffed at the line of scrimmage by the Lockview Dragons. And I would assume we're gonna see one of those things that you love, a punt. Shane Taylor and Tyler McKay are in on the stop. And the punt team is coming out now for the Eagles. There you see Joe Doucette, always a threat. Always a threat, Joe Doucette. Hmm. Timeout is called by the Auburn Eagles. They couldn't quite get it together. Play clock was running out and they called a timeout. Let's get good cover on this. Now, O-line, we got to get off the ball, man. We got to start moving some people. And don't stop in the hole. We're stopping in the hole, okay? The bronze running into your backsides. Now, keep moving. Keep moving in the hole, all right? All right, now stay with this, okay? We've got a couple of mistakes. We're down two. It's 2 nothing. Come on, let's get a good putt, and let's cover. Let's go. Come on. So no panic there from Coach Villardo. No. A little irritation, I would call it. He knows his team can be better, and he wants to see it from them. Well, this is going to be a key series here because, uh, like he said, they're down two scores. You get a good punt here to uh, pin lock you back. And they don't get it. And we've got a whistle on the play. And I believe it's blown down just because of the shortness of the punt. We've saw, seen that a few times this season. Just a safety thing. Yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, normally you like to see that play go through to its uh, fruition, but in the name of safety, I can understand why. They don't want to see any real dangerous blocks. Matt Babineau and the Lockview High School Dragons. Lead 13-0, time ticking away in the first half. 
Ooh, you're right in the middle of that huddle. Fabino over the middle for Collins. Avoids the low tackle, just jumps over it from Lewis Mayo. Seems like Lockman has found something over the middle on their pass. Fabino drills it right in there. Big yardage and another first down. First and 10 from the 41. Fabino going right to Kalapo for a hard three or four yards. Riley Palapo having a big game. The big thing about this Lockview team that I like is they can all catch the ball. Very yeah. few incompletions. And they catch with their hands too. They're not waiting for the ball to come in close to bounce off the shoulder pad. And it's a cold enough night that the ball should be bouncing around on them. It's not. Collins and I just put the hex on him. Whistle goes incomplete. The old commentator's hex. Take another look at this one. Nick Collins maybe looking upfield before he caught it. You see, he's right at. Definitely, that was a forward pass. Third and seven. Tyler McKay's back to punt. Low snap. McKay picks it up, puts it on a line. Return from the 10. Lewis Mayo gets it out to about the 23, 24. And the Auburn Eagles will take over. And you got to think, with the athleticism the Eagles possess, they're going to break something pretty soon, although this locked you defense has been amazing. Well, their, their problem has been their inability to hang on to the football, uh, number one. And then when they do put the ball in the air, uh, they were victimized by the tip football, which ended up uh, in an interception, then another clean interception. Coming up at halftime, Mavs is going to chat with Rob Morgan, the head coach from the Sackville High Kingfishers, who are eyeing a Division II title this season. Rob here scouting this one out tonight. It's going to be a medium run that time from Lewis Mayo. Second and four. Well, there's got to be a sense of urgency here for Auburn. Uh, they've got to score before uh, the end of this half, and we're approaching the three-minute mark. They certainly don't want to go into the locker room down by two scores. Willis tosses. Lewis Mayo changes sides. What a block by Chase Times. That's going to be first down for the Auburn Eagles. No, they're saying it's third down. No, that's got to be wrong. First down it is. First down, yeah, and that was a huge block that time by Chase Times. You see he reverses the field and coming in, <laughs> he just cleaned out that poor defense. I had no idea he was coming. So it's first down from the 38. Timeout called Auburn. Coach Villardo didn't like something before the start of the play. He was still chatting with DeBron Lewis Mayo. Well, like I said, this is a huge, huge drive for Auburn. They've got to get some points here. Come before the storm. Boy, this has been a great one. I've been, and I mean, they really all have been. It's There's been something exciting in every game we've done since September, since Labor Day, when we started our high school football coverage. Well, the thing is that this gives us an opportunity to see how uh, how athletic a lot of these teams are. Some of these these running backs for Auburn, uh, the the running game for Sackville High has been like totally impressive every time we've seen them. Of course, 
uh, Citadel in Division One, who uh, coming off a loss to C.P. Allen. Uh, it's tight things up a little bit in Division One. And as the football season winds down, see, so we've got some exciting news coming up later this week. Reception by Times. And just to finish my thought, we've got some exciting news coming up later this week about some high school basketball, some volleyball, some high school hockey we're going to be looking at this season. So we'll probably chat more about that on Sports Talk later this week. But Chase Tynes, we've seen him go up for the rebounds. This time he goes up for the big first down reception. Hey, just like an NFL wide receiver came down with both feet inbounds, no question about it. And you know you had my attention at high school basketball, by the way. <laughs> Speaking of Chase Tynes. Yes, the old Auburn, Auburn Citadel battles will continue in basketball this year. Willis, this time goes left for Spivey. Good He's job. got a first down. Asante Spivey is tackled just before the 15-yard line. You know... Some very, very impressive running backs uh, on this Auburn team, but this guy Spivey might be might be the quickest of them all, and and he knows how to use his blocks. And look at who is that? Jonathan Cox, the safety, he comes out of nowhere to make the tackle, get a saving tackle for Lockfield. Cox already with one interception on the night. See, so you said Auburn needed to score on this drive. They're looking good. Lewis Mayo, he's brought down right around the line of scrimmage, second down. Boy, I've been impressed with Shane Taylor tonight, too. Yeah, he's played a real solid game defensively for the Dragons. Here you see he fights off the block. Didn't get the best block in the world on him, but uh, it's probably uh, due in part to his elusivity. That's a big word to say in the court. It is. Spivey. Oh, he's in trouble. Is he going to be able to work out of it? Fumble. Out of bounds. Unbelievable. They just, they're having such difficulty holding on to football. Third down facing the Eagles. Third and 11. Yeah, nobody touched him. He just dropped the football. Lucky one out of bounds. Third and 11. Oh, what a big play in this game. Willis under center. Drops back, looks right. Looking in the end zone for Chase Tynes. Incomplete. And there's a late flag on the play from the back of the end zone. Blackview doesn't like that. Uh, I think it was Jared Irvin with real good coverage there. We're going to take another look. Chase Tynes was in double coverage. They're going to call it pass interference. Pass interference, number 84, Lockview, 15-yard penalty, first down. And they're going to call it on Jared Irvin. Number 84. Well, they might call him for face guarding more so than, than the contact because there was minimal contact here. Well, the interesting part is it doesn't come from that official, although he was reaching for it, then he just said no. It came from the other official in the other part of the end zone. First and goal. They're waiting on the chain gang while they got no role to play here. Willis. Hand off. We'll wait for the signal. Second down. Spotted on the one. Boy, this Lockview defense has been really, really good. Good game tackling on that play up the middle. They're going to have to do it again. Lockview calling timeout. Giving the offense a chance to get a play together as well. 
No cutting. You're on the one yard line. Get hey, the hey, count them up. Count them up in the huddle. Let's go. So for the viewer at home, what's double tap and go? That's a great question. All right. Sounds to me like it's going to be a, a pass, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I. I mean, the way they're running the football, why would you even risk it? Mm -hmm. Because I can't hang on to it? <laughs> Second and goal, Eagles. Touchdown, DeBron Lewis Mayo. Finally, the Eagles are able to break through 13-6. Well, this was, you know, easy. I mean, he practically goes in untouched. Uh, good blocking up front. That's an easy call. Now, if that's a double tap and go, I don't know. It is tough to stop a team from your one. High snap, they're gonna have to try it for two. And they're gonna get it. Oh, good scramble, good recovery by Jonathan Kirstead to make some chicken salad out of chicken scratch that time. <laughs> Well, there you see the high snap. And you're right, Chris, he, he made something out of nothing there. Good speed and quickness. Gets to the flag, the pylon. Jonathan Kirstead with the two-point conversion. Just inside. Great camera work down there. It's been Emma all season. I think Emma's back down there tonight. Here's Mass with the touchdown score, DeBron Lewis Mayo. You got your number called on the goal line. Take us through that play. I just, I didn't have my head up and I was just focused on scoring the ball and I dropped the ball in the end zone. How big is this uh, score going into the half? We're just trying to get an undefeated season and get and, and win the championship. Thanks, DeBron. Best of luck. Thanks. Guys? Thanks a lot, Mavs. Lots of work to be done and you can tell by his answers. Well, a man, a few words, because uh, he's a, uh, it's serious business for him. He wants us undefeated season. Short kick. Return by McKay. He's taken down at the 40, and the Dragons will get one possession here to finish the half. Yeah, that was a very nice tackle by Patrick Tulaney on special teams. Yo, man. One more. Let's go. Been a great night for Matt Babineau in the Lockview offense. See if they can put some more points on, answer back. And remember that Lockview will get the ball back to start the second half. Babineau, he's looking deep left for Collins, picked off! Willis with the interception. Down at the 35. Interception by Myron Willis. Kind of a curious play call, you know. Uh, an opportunity to at least take some time off the clock. Goes by the board here in, uh, in the pass. I wonder if that was option two after the snap. Well, now you've given some life to this uh, Auburn Drive team that has proven to be quite proficient at moving the ball via the run, especially. Well, giving up another score here would certainly be tough on the mental state of the Lockheed Dragons. Willis, handoff for Lewis Mayo. Lewis Mayo, flags fly. Go, 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 go
It's on you. Would think it would be against Lockview. Unnecessary roughness, face mask, number two, Auburn, back 15 yards, loss of down, second down. That call is going to be on Chase Tynes on a block. So it wasn't on the tackling play at all. Well, that's a bit of a tough break for Auburn, uh, quite honestly. Not very... Not a not a very customary play that you see a wide receiver making getting called on a face mask while making a block. Second and 25 on the score clock. That's a short pass over the middle to Kirstead. There is some confusion over the downs. I thought it was first down on that last play as well, but there's third down showing, and the official's going with third down. And the kicking team is coming on for Auburn. I thought that was off the first play for the penalty. Anyway, it's third down, and the kicking team is out for the Eagles. Short punt, Doucette on the kick return. Doucette, he's taken down hard at the 46. So with 25, 27, pardon me, seconds left on the clock, the Lockview Dragons will take over. Good job, D. Do you take a knee here and let the clock run out? 27 seconds. You know, Babino's got a strong arm. If you can put together a couple of passes, why not make a go for it? You're getting the ball back. Because last time you did that, you were picked off and gave Auburn an opportunity for another score. That's true, but there's no timeouts left for Auburn. Let's see what they decide to do. Doesn't look like it's going to be a need. Receivers in motion. Babino drops back. Short over the middle for Doucette. Doucette out of bounds. Just inside Auburn territory. You can hear the Auburn coaching staff tell their defenders, just keep them in front of you. The super prevent. <laughs> Babino again drops back, guns it over the middle. Ooh. Hit hard, but hanging on was Chris Malone. Big Tackle by DeBron Lewis Mayo. What a catch by Lewis Mayo. Nice catch, nice hit. He, I'm certain he got the wind knocked out of him on that one. Hopefully that's all it is. It's gonna be Lockview ball from the 40. It's a first down with 15 seconds remaining. That's the other dangerous thing about passes at that at this point and uh, at the end of the half or the end of the game. It gives the opportunity for a defender to make himself into a hero. Malone is making his way off the field. What a stop over the middle. Curtis Coward. Remember Curtis from, uh, he was at the under 17s. I think Mavs did a nice interview with Curtis. Stepdad of one Mr. Chase Kynes. Yeah. Babino. First down rolls right. Babino looking for a receiver. Doesn't see one, so he runs. He's going to be just shy of the first down. Looks like they'll get another playoff before the half. 
Yeah, and I'd get some, uh, yeah, you see the Auburn players going back in the end zone. Matt Babineau, last play of the half, here he is, dropping back, he's gonna go short, that's gonna fall incomplete to Riley Palapal, and that's gonna do it for the first half. The Lockview High Dragons lead the Auburn Eagles 13-8 in what's been an awesome half so far. Here's a look at our play of the half. Babineau, short to Palapal, and he finds Pater. Off the quick screen, gets some help from his blockers, and follows Liam, Ma <laughs> Liam McCormick all the way into the end zone. Here's Mavs Gillis with Coach Villardo. Chris, you guys are getting some offensive rhythm here uh, to end the first half. What did you like about the first half? Well, I mean, we were a little, we were, well, more than a little sloppy. We were pretty sloppy. We turned the ball over four times. You just can't do that in a half of football and expect to be competitive. So we got to tighten a few things up. We know Lockview's a good team. Uh, they throw the ball well, the, the crossing routes. We got to shut them down on Doucette coming across the, over the middle. And uh, other than that, I mean, we just got to not panic, play sound football, and, and we're right in this thing. Thanks, Chris. Best of luck. Thank you. Take care. Lock you up 13 to 8 here on Nova Scotia High School Football. The second half coming up. It's been a good one so far here in Bed. Halifax. Smart travelers choose future rims. They offer comfortable rooms, the Redwood Grill, and conference spaces for up to 125 people. A great location with tons of parking. Future Rins, Halifax Hotel and Conference Center. Proud to support this program. <laughs> For your eyes only, think before you send. The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlink TV. Hi, my name is Amy and my tech tip is on how to change the keyboard settings on your handheld Apple device like an iPhone or iPad. If you want to add a new keyboard to your Apple device, such as Russian, French, Japanese, or even the emoji keyboard, which is full of fun icons such as smiley faces and hearts, this is how you get it. First, from your home screen, click on the Settings app. From there, scroll down and click General. Then scroll down some more and click on Keyboard. This will bring you into your keyboard settings. Once on the screen, click on Keyboards. Then you will be brought to a list of your current ones. To add new keyboard, click on Add New Keyboard. And then select whichever keyboard you wish to add. Once added, you will see your new keyboard appear on the list. Now, whenever you use your keyboard, you can access the new ones you added by hitting the blue button beside the spacebar. If you have more than one extra keyboard added, simply keep hitting the glow button until you reach your desired keyboard. You can keep scrolling and get back to your original keyboard. That's it. My name is Amy and that was my tech tip. Fueling Around on East Link TV is presented by Tirecraft. Proud to be driven by you. This is James Perot and he loves cars. He loves talking about them, loves working on them, and loves answering questions about them. So give him a call. He'll be answering your questions on a new night. Fueling Around, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Eastlink TV, Channel 10 and HD 610. Available only to Eastlink customers. Eastlink TV is your home for local high school sports. Our coverage includes select season games, championships, Feature stories of student athletes, teams, coaches, volunteers, and sports talk, where our experts will recap all the action. On Eastlink TV, Channel 10, HD 610, and on demand. Available only to Eastlink customers.
The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlinktv. Welcome back. Joining me at this time, Rob Morgan. He is the head coach of the Sackville High Kingfishers. Uh, Rob, if we saw a full moon, this has been a full game so far in that first half. What's your thoughts on the game? I think it's been an excellent game. Two, uh, two great teams going at it. Uh, I think you know, Lockheed is obviously fighting for their playoff lives, and, and Auburn's going for their first undefeated season ever. Uh, you know, Auburn's having their challenges with turning the ball over, and I think Lockheed's got to do a little bit better a job of uh, taking advantage of that. But hell of a football game. I think Lockwood Swain on your uh, Sackville team would be trying to take advantage of a lot of these turnovers tonight. He, he very much would. Lachlan's, uh, Lachlan's great at stripping the ball and, and uh, very much takes pride in that, so he'd have a good night. Rob, Division Two this year, it seems to be a lot of fun. There's been a lot of parity up at the top. I guess, how much fun has it been coaching with, with such good teams uh, playing Division Two? Well, it's really nice to, to, to be able to coach, to be able to game plan, to, to be able to make adjustments during games with the parity in the league and and you know with the close games and and all the players and, and the wonderful talent that there is you know at the top of this it, it makes it a real real challenge for the coaches and a lot of fun for the kids you're coming off a forfeit from uh, Sydney Academy now it's been three weeks since you guys are going to the playoffs without playing a game in three weeks what are the challenges there well keeping the kids motivated obviously uh, you can only you know rep so many things over and over and over uh, before they want to put it into practice on the field and you know our focus this week is uh, you know we took it a little bit light last week and, and let's really get back to business and, and get down to uh, the brass tacks and and see what we can do to to win ourselves a championship when it when it comes down to this this point of the season I guess is there is there any insult this time or is it just fine-tuning uh, no there's a little bit of install there's there's uh, there's some things that uh, we like to throw in as little what we call playoff twists uh, you know just things teams haven't seen on uh, on film so far this year and uh, keep things interesting and, and keep everybody on their toes. So yeah, we'd like to have a little bit of fun with the kids with that as well. It, it seems as if off-season uh, training and off-season commitment has really increased the last couple of years. But what are you guys seeing uh, from that, from your team? Well, it's huge. Uh, really, you look at the teams that are that are Division One and, and looking to make Division One, and those are all the kids who are committed in, into bettering themselves off-season, both through uh, provincial programs and in, in the weight room. And it's really the way to go. You look at the university programs, that's what it takes to be successful. Those those who want to go to the CIS have already bought into that at the high school level. Those successful programs will, if not already, have bought into it, and uh, they'll continue to see the success from it. You also came from the minor program. We're going to have a couple, actually, the Pee Wee and Bantam finals here on November 15th on East Link TV. What advice would you give to, I guess, the kids coming up in Bantam that are looking to transition to high school? What, would you, what should they be looking at in the offseason? In the off season, really, really look to do what they can to uh, to get more football in. There's there's numerous aspects and avenues for them. Uh, there's flag football. There's there's uh, the provincial programs. There's a whole bunch of junior development programs and camps, and everything. The more football these kids can get uh, in the off season, a little bit young for weights, uh, some of them, uh, but the more football they can get, the better off they'll be, and, and the more fun they'll have, the more successful they'll be. Rob, I appreciate you taking some time. We ho hopefully we'll see Sackville High in the Division II finals coming up. Pleasure. Thanks so much. Rob Morgan, he's the head coach of the Sackville High Kingfishers. They're undefeated in the other division of Division II. Auburn's undefeated in the Scotia Division. They're looking to have an undefeated season, but Lockheed's saying, hold on, 30 minutes left. You got to get through us first. Visiting Halifax, smart travelers choose Future Rims. They offer comfortable rooms, the Redwood Grill, and conference spaces for up to 125 people. A great location with tons of parking. Future Rims, Halifax Hotel and Conference Center. Proud to support this program. The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlinktv.
The killer whale, or orca, can be found in the oceans surrounding Canada. This intelligent mammal is at the top of the food chain. Already a species at risk, orcas are threatened by toxins found in what they eat. We need to keep our oceans clean if we want the killer whale to have a future. And that's just a start. To learn more about orcas and how you can help protect them, visit hww.ca. Hi, I'm Sam McKinnon, and I'm a volunteer with Eastlink TV in Sydney. You're watching Eastlink TV. Honestly, Ogie Oglethorpe, if he came into the queue, he would absolutely Ooh. clean up. Ogie Oglethorpe, he's from Ooh, the Syracuse Bulldogs. The what? From Slapshot. Oh, come, come on, on man. Know. First of all, Dylan Boucher with the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles would take Ogie Oglethorpe any day. Oh, now, yes. people want to hear from coaches, players, statistics, power plays, current stuff, not this Slapshot stuff. And that's why you watch Sports Talk and Eastlink TV Fridays at 5.30. A new documentary from Eastlink looks at the company's modest beginnings in rural Nova Scotia. Company founder John Bragg reveals the valuable lessons he learned as a blueberry farmer and how he's put them to use to become a major player in the Canadian communications industry. The Eastlink Story, available on demand. Hi, my name's Trevor McNeil. I'm a volunteer with Eastlink TV in Sydney, and you're watching Eastlink TV. Do you do any activities, any sports? And how do you feel about that? I hate feeling sad, too. Would you like to talk about it? And what makes you feel better? Oh, really? You like to knit? No, I do not like sardines. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Jean Clinton. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Mike, first half, you were able to uh, win the turnover battle, only 13 points on the board. Did you leave some points there? I think we did, I think, but we also turned the ball over three times as well, so really we're only plus two on the on the turnover, so uh, did we leave points on the board? Yeah, I think a little bit, but not, not as bad as what we think it is. Uh, what were the adjustments you guys made the second half? Uh, we just widened our ends out and just told them to not over pursue the running back. They have a great player over there, and we just kind of have to take them out of the, take their best player out. Thanks, Mike. Best of luck. Thank you. Guys? Well, thanks a lot, Mavs. Now we're going to look at how the offense got going. Talk about those turnovers. Right there, Jonathan Cox thought he had a turnover. Turner finds it, and that turns into seven points. And then Cox does get an interception, Cecil, and that leads to get another touchdown. Yeah, that was a, a nice job there by Mark Firth, uh, untouched. And then, of course, uh, the big interception. And Riley Falapo with a nice catch and run. And here's the pass interference on Chase Times that set up the one-yard touchdown run by DeBron Lewis-Mayo. 
Well, they needed something to get themselves back into the game, and uh, that's just what the doctor ordered for Auburn Drive. And now after winning the toss pregame, Lockview had deferred. They will get the ball back to start the second half. Leading by five. Nathan Decker will get us started in the second half. McKay. Oh, a great return by McKay. Bumble. Fumbled, but recovered just in time. And the Dragons have it at midfield. Boy, how huge would that have been for Auburn if they were able to recover that fumble? Here you see the strip by Asante Spivey, who's trying to do it all for Auburn. Speaking of doing it all, Matt Babineau, 13 of 16 for 177 in the first half. Some quarterbacks would call that a decent day. Malapo on first down for two yards. He goes down to the ground hard. Jonathan Kerstead, speaking of doing it all on both sides of the ball, it was Kerstead who ran for the two-point convert late in the first half. You hear the coaching staff saying that Doucette's coming on the cross. Nope, running play. And tackled on the short run, Peter Block, his first carry of the day. It's gonna be third and about three. We'll make that third and two for the Dragons. It's a big decision looming for Karecki. I think he's gonna go for it. Hey. You gotta go. The first attempt is for a third down conversion by the Dragons to start the second half. Babineau, under pressure, completed. And then Doucette has ran all the way back about five or six yards. But it'll be a first down. They'll spot it at the 42. Well, Babineau shows a nice touch there, you know, third and one. Uh, he's got a lot of confidence in that right arm of his, and why not? He puts the ball right on the money. He should be confident in his receiving core as well as he's now 14 for 17 on the night. Babineau, uh-oh, goes left for Palapo. Get the ball, get the ball! And Palapo's gonna be close to a first down. He'll probably be second and short. Some nice play calling there. They're safe, safe passes that they're making here. Uh, and his running backs and receivers are able to turn the short pass into another first down. Second and short, Babineau back to pass. Looks right, didn't get what he wanted on that and it's gonna be incomplete to Riley Murphy. So that was a bad throw from Babineau. Yeah, and he looked over to the bench and he did say, yeah, that was my bad. So it's going to be third and short, so they'll have to try again on third down. Babino, again on third down. Over the middle, that's complete. And a fumble. And it's recovered by Auburn. So a third down completion to Mark Firth. But then Spivey recovers the fumble. Spivey doing damage on both sides of the football tonight. Myron Willis and the Auburn Eagles will take over on the 21. And that's the second forced fumble by Lewis Mayo. Well, I think he's only minus one on fumbles now on both sides of the ball. DeBron Lewis Mayo's been in on everything here tonight. Three and two. Here he goes again. It's going to be a four-yard gain for DeBron Lewis Mayo on first down. Lewis Mayo also has the touchdown for the Eagles. 
some equipment repairs on the sideline for Cameron Grace. Second down, Lewis Mayo running in the wrong direction though, and he's tackled for a loss. Well, he had nothing off left tackle, tried to reverse his field and was met by a couple of the Lockview Dragon defensive players, so it's gonna be a punch situation. Kicking team comes off for the Eagles. Back to receive the kick again, Tyler McKay. Folks at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that the CRTC is conducting a review of community television in Canada. Of course, Eastlink TV falls into the category of community television stations. And we rely on our support from viewers with the CRTC. So please head to eastlink.ca slash eastlink TV to learn more and show your support for your local community station. Let's go on, Sorry. 38. 38. So Matt Babineau and the Dragons will get the ball back at the Auburn 44. Well, tremendous field position for Lockheed. Big opportunity for them here. First down pass to Nick Collins. And he will get a first down. He's down at the 25. Here's the pass, the quick pass out to Collins. No Auburn defenders really anywhere near him. And a shoestring tackle that time made by Nick, uh, Ty, Ty Keem Williams. Davino again on first down, another quick play, this time for Doucette, who has nowhere to go. Tackle that time by Seamus Tobin, a late flag. And that usually means objectionable conduct. Yeah, I think it's gonna be called on Doucette. Objectionable conduct, number eight, Lockview, back 10 yards, second down. Between the two of us, we might make a referee, Cecil. <laughs> One day. Colin Bond and the crew are doing a great job. Let's see if we can see anything here. And I think he was calling for there a flag on that, the last hit there. He was a little animated. Babino. Palapo. It's going to be third and long, so the kicking team is going to take the field for the Dragons. But how about Riley Palapal tonight? And watch this block here. Just wipes oh, oh, out oh. the defensive back. That was... Uh, it was McCormick again, the same guy you. who followed into the end zone earlier. I wonder if they walk around school like that and McCormick just pushes people out of the way for him. That's gonna be a punt out of bounds. From Tyler McKay and the Eagles will take over. A five point game here. So much on the line. Especially if you're the Lockview Dragons. First down for the Eagles. Then he play. As he likes to do, he cuts back, and Lewis Mayo is going to get about a five-yard run after he ran 15 yards. I think it's uh, almost spivey time, wouldn't you say, Chris? Uh, time to give him the ball and see what he can do on the outside. Well, each time, and again, though, he did run into one of his own players. You heard Coach Chris Villardo talking about that in the first half. As his O-line was in his way. Now a little bit slow to get up. As Shane Taylor has been a very bright spot for the Dragons. The training staff is going to come on. 
as he takes a knee. But yeah, Spivey, you know, he's really broken those big runs in these second and short situation, second and medium yardage situations. So Cecil, I think you might be right. Might see Spivey. And then there's also Chase Tynes, who they've only gone to. Well, there's Chase Tynes, Cecil, and we talked about it a little bit earlier. And sports fans in Nova Scotia are very familiar with what happened this summer. A big, big night down at the Hamburg Center. And there's Chase Tynes playing for Team Nova Scotia in the U-17 National Basketball Championships, number 10. And that's got to bring back great memories for you. Well, it certainly does. That, that was, you know, as far as the highlights that I've been involved with with Eastlink, that right there was one of them because it really was such an enormous event for the basketball community. But to see Nova Scotia do what they did as an underdog team against a very, very solid and strong Ontario team was just, uh, I don't know if we've ever seen anything better than that. Well, I, I just, uh, I'll never forget the look on your face when the buzzer went there. You could see how proud you were for someone who had been around sports in the province for so long, especially the basketball community. There's Lewis Mayo. He's going to run for a first down. And the Eagles will have the ball around the 30. Just to continue on with that high school basketball, or pardon me, the provincial basketball, uh, leading into the high school basketball. But Nate Darling uh, has committed to the NCAA as well. The University of Alabama, Birmingham, UAB. Uh, they've got a, a very, very long and storied basketball tradition. And... Uh, Let's just say we'll be following him online for the next four years or so. Willis under pressure, trying to get away from the sack. Improvises to Tynes. And Tynes is going to get five or six. Yeah, and the, the Lockview coaching staff not very happy. They thought that uh, the quarterback was in the grasp right here. And I guess an argument could be made. Josh Powell was around his ankle like a chihuahua. <laughs> they, they pick up, you know, a good three yards or so on a play that really uh, was going nowhere. <laughs> Willis. I can see a bit of fatigue in his face there. He's playing on both sides of the ball. Lewis Mayo off the toss. Nice cut. He's trying to get to the outside. Just avoids a hit from Brett Howard. And it's third down. Third and short, so you know Auburn's going for it. Well, that's been their, their habit so far, but this is a very, very tricky call here. If they come up short. Willis trying to go himself. I don't know. They're going to need a good spot, and it looks like they've gotten it. Yeah, no need to even bring the chains in. First down. <laughs> Lewis Mayo trying to get outside. He's going to run for two, maybe three yards. As he gets his shoulder pads ripped out of his jersey. Excellent pursuit that time by Lockview. Again, Dakota Nickerson doesn't give up. Dakota Nickerson, by the way, fine baseball player as well. I uh, had an opportunity to see him uh, play a couple times this summer. Aired out by Willis. Incomplete. Looking for Spivey, but good coverage by the Lockview defensive backfield. Jared Irvin getting some props there.
Boy, that Willis has got a strong arm, though. Punt situation now for Auburn. Watch the fake. Punted. It's going to bounce at the 45 and roll back towards the 50. No yards. Flag is down. And Doucette gets nowhere on the return. No yards, number 28, Auburn. That's a five-yard penalty, first down. So Seamus Tobin on the coverage team is going to be penalized, and it'll be five-yard, no yards penalty. Five-yard, no yards. <laughs> Better than a 15-yard, no yard. Five-yard, no yard sounds like a, an indie band. Babino looking left. Oh, what a catch by Collins. Wow. Nick Collins, first down. Excellent coverage, too, by the Auburn defensive backfield, but just a tremendous catch by Collins. Look at him go up for it, come down with it, was able to bring it into his body. Wow. Doucette on the screen, good for first down. Times flag. Touchdown, you said there is a flag on the play. And the ball's coming back. Holding number 89 after yards were gained. Back 10 yards from the foul. First down. Tough break for the Dragons. 82. Penalty on Mark 82. Firth. Well, take that six points off, and here you see it. He's got him. Definitely had, was holding him by the, the shoulder. See the hand grasp. Doucette doesn't like it, but if he sees the replay, he'll understand why. First and ten. Babineau, left for Firth, and Tynes and the Eagles were all over that play. Sniffed that out from the very beginning. Nice play by Chase Tynes. It's going to be about an eight-yard loss for Firth, who was also slow to get up. Tynes was on him the entire play. That's good defensive anticipation is what that is. They're going to call it a six-yard loss, second and 16. Babino zips it over the middle, picked off to Brown Lewis Mayo. Doucette on the high tackle as Mark Firth limps off in front of us. There you see it, Firth right there on the bench. He's got that high ankle. That's not good. Look at the turnovers. That's nine tonight. Yeah, that's nothing that either team will be proud of, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes in football. There's been a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks, a lot of pressure from both defenses. Willis throws left. They're going to call it incomplete as he was looking for Spivey, second and 10. You can see Colin. I you gonna call Colin. me Colin? <laughs> <laughs> you can see Chris, that they're trying to uh, really give a concerted effort to get the ball into the hands of Spivey. He's one of their best playmakers. Uh, looking for him in one-on-one -on -one coverage particularly. Got a whistle before the ball is snapped. Procedure call against Auburn. And I guess for anyone who's watching and wouldn't understand why you called me Colin, you can explain that. Ball start, number 50, Auburn, back five yards. Repeat, second down. 
One of my oldest and dearest friends uh, just happens to be your uncle, your uncle Colin Abbott. Uh, one of the, if not the finest, fast pitch hitters that Canada has ever produced. And uh, he's got a personality that's even better than the talent he has on the softball field. How's that? Was that's, that? That's pretty good, yeah. That's pretty good. It's, it's always nice to hear good things about your family members. And so yeah, that's why you called me Colin, because you, you knew him first. <laughs> that's right. Great guy. Second and 15 for the Eagles. Lewis Mayo trying to make something out of the backfield. He's in trouble. And a huge pile on the sideline. I'm pretty sure there's some uh, some nasty words exchanged down there at the bottom of that pile. These teams are starting to get really intense down there at field level. And there you see uh, players going after the football, trying to create another turnover. Third and long as DeBron Lewis Mayo unable to make anything out of that backfield pass. Two set. Oh, Back that's to the turn. Oh, fortunate for the Dragons. Oh, amazing field position from the seven. Well, it's a bad snap. You'll see how high it is. He goes up off his fingertips, and then he knows he's in trouble, so he's got to try to get out of danger. And uh... Here's Mark Firth limping off. You can see he couldn't even put any weight on that left ankle. That's the last series. Well, good, tough Nova Scotia boy. He's back in there. He's right back in there, although I'm not sure he's at 100%. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's not. <laughs> I think you'd be lying if you said he was at 100. But he's got it taped up. He's back in there. Babineau, pull out, look, looking for the end zone. Oh, he had it if he kept going wide. He's got it. And he's in anyway. Riley Palapo, second touchdown of the night. The Lockview Dragons extend the lead to two scores. It looked like there was some fine blocking on the left side of that offensive line, and look at that hole right there. That is like too easy. And he gets to the goal line before he meets with any resistance at all. Well, you see him cut back there. I was watching him. He had all kinds of room left, decided to take it in to the contact, but I guess that's just kind of the guy Riley Palapal is. So 20 to eight is the score after they tack on the extra point. Chris Villardo's Eagles got their work cut out for them now. Well, Lockview, they capitalize on any mistake that Auburn makes. Uh, they turn an interception into points, a fumble into points, and now a bot punt attempt into points. That's the mark of any good team. I always thought the biggest compliment a coach could pay you is we can't make any mistakes against these guys. Absolutely. And, and that is the case against this Lockview team, too. I mean, you cannot turn the ball over. Uh, especially, you know, five or six times and expect to beat them. And the Dragons kickoffs have been amazing. In first on the tackle is McKay. So the Eagles will take possession. Late flag. Well, coming up on Friday night, it'll be Steve, Mavs, and myself doing some more work on the old sports talk set. Here I am drawing out some plays for Mavs. And then the boys like to have a little bit of fun. Well, we'll be talking about some things that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, some new high school sports added. <laughs> 
And yes, he was supposed to erase his own face there. That's Diego Bauer in our creative department doing that. But we have some more sports added at the high school level. Actually, next Monday night, it won't be football. There's no football games on the schedule. So we'll have Digby and Yarmouth in high school hockey play. That game is going to be carried from the Mariner Center. And then we've also got some basketball coming up from Citadel, volleyball. Uh, we've got, we're going to be at CPA. We're going to be doing some stuff down with the Cape Breton High School Hockey League. Fantastic. It's uh, really exciting, actually. I got the news this week about some of the schedules are finally out, and, and we're really getting uh, getting into it. And uh, lots of provincial championships coming up, some lots of coverage from those things. In fact, Danny Harvey was down at the cross-country championships today, and we'll have a story on that on Sports Talk. Uh, we've got, and when I'm talking about basketball and volleyball and hockey, it's not just the boys. We're going to have the girls on as well, and uh, oh, it's going to be exciting stuff. Well, yeah. Other than that, play run defense. Let's go. Yeah. We we had talked before uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, Chris, about uh, the Citadel High girls team and how they have been <laughs> undefeated for. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the fourth year. Uh, now that's really something that is incredible when you stop and think about the amount of talent that in Nova Scotia we've seen produced, uh, yeah, Halifax Grammar School produced like the likes of Justine Colley, for instance. Mm -hmm. So for any team to go undefeated and have a record like that, an unblemished record for so long, is just truly incredible. Oh, and it is our goal, Cecil, to feature athletes from as many schools as possible, as many sports as possible. Even talking about doing snowboarding. Oh, a lot of reception by Snivy, Spivey. First out of the 35, but we're going to be the snowboarding championships at Maritok in February. We're going to get a camera out there and cover some of that stuff. The cheerleading championships coming up later on in the year. And of course, the granddaddy of them all, the track and field championships this year down from Stellard, and that's going to be a huge one in June. Let me tell you, that's the first thing that I know you guys did high school-wise uh, last year from Acadia. I watched that. The conditions were, were trying, uh, but that didn't dampen the spirits of any of those participants, and the coverage was excellent. I'm looking forward to it again. Oh, we saw so many great athletes. Of course, uh, Jack Campbell comes to mind. Uh, of course, is a, a running back for Siddle. But so many of these athletes are multi-sport athletes, and we get to see them in different sports. Uh, sometimes in the summer, then with their all-star programs, and we get to follow them as they go through their young careers, and it's, it's it really is awesome. Like, it's exciting. Well, the thing is, is Eastlink TV is giving these young athletes an avenue so that they can see their wares uh, in, a, in a, what I call a very, very professional production, and that makes a big difference to these young kids. I was just walking over uh, during halftime, and one of the Auburn players said to me, good job, you know. These guys are watching these games even when they're not playing, and that really says something. Getting late in the third quarter, the Eagles just get a first down. And it's really ratcheting up down there between the two teams. Coaches are trying to keep them on task. I really wish. First down for the Eagles. Willis. A little toss for Spivey. A whole lot of cut. And he is cut down after a five or six yard gain. No flags on the play, so that will be the last play of the quarter. We've got 15 minutes remaining. The Dragons lead the Eagles 20 to 8. The CRTC is reviewing the future of community television. For more information and to voice your support, please visit eastlink.ca backslash eastlink tv. When visiting Halifax, smart travelers choose Future Rails. They offer comfortable rooms, the Redwood Grill, and conference spaces for up to 125 people. A great location with tons of parking. Future Rands, Halifax Hotel and Conference Center. Proud to support this program. La fondation de ma communauté, c'est là où nous avons un rôle à jouer. Plus que la charité, c'est la bonté que j'ai pour les gens qui sont à proximité. Près de chez moi, le cœur est là. 
ou l'aide accomplit des exploits. Ma fondation m'aide pour cela. Aider les gens qui ne peuvent vraiment pas s'en sortir et qui veulent grandir. Ma fondation s'étend partout au pays, montrant ce que nous, milliers de gens d'ici, pouvons accomplir. Si vous décidez d'agir avec une volonté et bien d'autres choses, tout cela repose sur la fondation. Hi, I'm Levi Marshall. Mining is a vital part of Nova Scotia's economy, but what do you really know about it? Watch Mining Rocks only on Eastlink TV. Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Mondays at 6.30 p.m. throughout October on Eastlink TV Channel 10 and HD 610. Available only to Eastlink customers. Well, see, so we just finished talking about multi-talented people in the sports world. Well, that's Tony DeCoste, and we have multi-talented people here at Eastlink TV as well. Tony, not only an awesome cameraman, is the host of Swap Chop. Now on Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. on Eastlink TV, give Tony a call tomorrow night. And they've got his theme music going tonight. Wow. That's Bill Barnaby on top of things. Tony does a great job, took over as host of the Swap Shop last year. And uh, like he said to us today, he said, guys, we moved to a new night. I don't know if everybody knows. Can you let them know? Because everyone watches football. Tony, can you do something? I need some winter tires, man. Can you help me? I got four winter tires for sale. I'll call in the Tony show tomorrow night. 7.30, Tuesday nights, Eastlink TV. That's Swap Shop. One of our top programs. Spivey goes right. Out of bounds, first down, and the Eagles are really putting a push on now to start the fourth quarter. I want to tell you, he took a... Uh, he took a shot out of bounds. Let's see if he is hit out of bounds or whether he got him right on the sideline. I say it was a push right on the sideline. You never want to fall on your bum right in front of the other team's fans. I'll tell you <laughs> that. That gets him fired up. They had something to say. No question about it. It's funny, actually. I don't talk about my own endeavors in the sports world very often, but what just happened reminded me of a story once when I was playing high school sports. It was hockey, not football, because we didn't have it, but I also fell down in front of the other team's fans, and I got a milk thrown at me. Oh. Very, very lucky play that time by Auburn. I thought the ball was going to be intercepted. It was just tipped, and it was tipped into the hands of one of the Auburn players, and there goes a the flag. Probably objection ball. Objectionable conduct, number seven, Auburn, back 10 yards. Second down. So second and very long, and I think one of the other things, I talked about the talking picking up between the teams themselves. I think the team, some of the players are having a yap at some of the officials as well. Well, you're never going to win that, that argument, so you might as well just leave that alone and concentrate on what you're supposed to do. Second and 25 for the Auburn Eagles, trailing by 12. Uh, they put themselves in a real difficult spot now as a result of that penalty. Willis looks right for times. Oh, good second effort, but he's unable to come up with the ball. Well, one thing we know about times is he can go up in the air. We've seen that uh, in basketball, and there you see just through his fingers, almost had it. Look at that awareness as he tried to reach out on his way down with his right arm. Boy, that guy. I've seen all I need to see about him. I know that he impresses me as an athlete. Well, he certainly does, and uh, we know that he has a, a bright future ahead of him, uh, whether it be on the football field or the hard court. Probably up to him. A little squid punt there. Whoa, dangerous. A little rugby toss. Doucette is in trouble. He needs to go down before he loses the ball, and he does. Boy, it's getting physical out there now. A couple of flags on the play. We'll wait and see what Colin Bond and the guys figure out. But that was a very dangerous play. It was, and, and certainly something when you're, <laughs> you're up 12 points. No yards. Number 64, five-yard penalty. First down. You're up 12 points in the fourth quarter, and you have to ask yourself, do you really need to make a dangerous play like that? 
I'd say the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, it was more of a rugby offload than, uh, than anything we saw. Speaking of rugby, boy, we had that battle for New Scotland earlier this summer. Man, those are some big men. Babino, again, little toss for Spidey. He's not going to gain any yards on first down. That's, that's a bit of the option left, uh, where the quarterback has the option of keeping the ball or pitching it to his running back. And here you see he's going to fake like he's going to run, draw the defense to him, and then uh, make a pitch. But uh, it was a late pitch, and it was well covered by Of course, I said Spivey. That's Palapo. Got my 20s mixed up. Pass on the right side. No mix. Nice not up. Move. Bradley Murphy for the first down. Great move by Riley Murphy. Good cut back inside. You see the pass, a bit of a wounded duck. But Murphy comes back to the ball and watch this move right there. Left the defender and ran for another 10 yards. Pick up the first down. Boy, that receiving court for the Dragons has been very impressive tonight. Davina, handoff. That's going to be close to a first down for Peter Block. And he went into the fence at the end of that play. Late hit out of bounds, no question about it. No question about it. I think it's Tykeem Williams. Myron! Cut it! Cut it! Unnecessary roughness, number nine, Auburn up 15 yards, first down. Here you see the, the inside handoff. Breaks it outside, and let's watch the end of the play. He's out of bounds here, and look at this. Oh, wow. He's lucky he's still in the game, quite honestly. Boy, that's dangerous. I've seen players ejected for less. Ooh. That was very late from behind into a fence. Pull up with. Down on the one. And if you're a lock view, you, you want to answer that penalty with six points right here. First and goal for the Dragons. Looking to put in some insurance points. Dabino. Good for the touchdown. And there are two Auburn players down on the field right now. Way to go! Way to go! Come on! Let's go! What a game Matt Babino is having tonight. Uh, and there you see number 72, Brendan Bates. I think he stepped on someone's foot and twisted his ankle. He's down. Matt Babineau is having himself a fantastic night. He's with Mavs Gillis. You're really having some fantastic series out there. What are, you, what are you seeing in front of you? Well, I'm seeing the defense and we're, everybody on the field is making perfect reads. Everybody's executing perfectly and we're just finding, just tearing them apart. We're finding everything, everything's open, everybody's executing, it's perfect. What's kind of gotten the execution moving for you guys this week? I mean, it was do or die? Yeah, it's do or die. We gotta win this. We gotta win this, get in the playoffs. We want this, we want the whole championship. And yeah, we got to win this game. I think that's it. Everybody's hyped. Thanks, Matt. Best of luck. Thanks, man. Guys? Thanks a lot, Mavs. And Matt Babineau definitely in the zone tonight, Cecil. Oh, no, I don't know how old he is, but he looks younger than he is. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 you want fight? Remember, these guys are still in high school. You forget about that when you're watching them play. They're, they're so impressive out there, but they're 14, 15, 16 years old. Matt, you got a little spit right there. Well, I don't know if uh, <laughs> I don't know if Babino can uh, be any more effective than he's been tonight. He's really played a pretty much a perfect game. I wonder if Brendan Bates is going to be all right. You see some fans there wrapped up in a blanket. And I got to thank Daniel McKenzie 
one of our volunteers here at Eastlink TV. He dropped me off a blanket up here in the booth because I was complaining that my legs were cold. Well, I'll tell you, I'll be wearing my long johns uh, next Here's time. Daniel, he's doing the program over at NSCC. We get a lot of volunteers come out of there. And, ah, yeah, he knows we're talking about him now. I tell you what, though, Cecil, and I'm not just saying this because he's here and he gave me a blanket. He is one awesome, awesome volunteer we've got there. He certainly is. He can do it all, too. And there's, an, there's another one of those hard-working camera persons up there. There's Amy McNeil under there somewhere. She's dressed up like a mummer. I think she's smiling under there. I don't know. I don't there's know. Emma. There's Emma. <laughs> Are you cold, uh, I tell you what, we complain, <laughs> <laughs> we complain about the cold a little bit, but those guys do so much. And speaking of cold, there's Dale. That's not Santa Claus. That's Dale White up there on the scissor lift, right down in the end zone. One of the hardest working men in show business. And there's another one. There's Alec Cook. He and Steve McLean. You know those awesome videos we show at the beginning of the Quebec League games? Well, Alec and Steve McLean put those together. And there's Tony. Enough camera time for Tony. That's twice tonight. Uh, he's, uh, he's getting used to it. Well, Steve, another one of our volunteers, you run the audio down there on the side. Big heated camera at the Major Midget game last week as well. First time with us. You know, he's not, Jeremy's not here tonight. Smart man, he knows when it's too cold to work. Brandon Bates, at least he's able to come off on his own. There's Mike Barnaby, brother of Bill Barnaby. Mike's got the leather sleeves going. He's he 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 was smart tonight. Hey, I gotta tell you, he's way better looking than Bill. <laughs> Maybe people don't realize exactly how many people it takes to run one of these. There's about 20 of us here tonight, I guess, between staff and volunteers. The truck is full of people. That's what we gotta do is put a camera in there. Those guys are always quick to show us on camera. No, you can't put a camera in there. You can't put a microphone in there. How's that? Too hot for TV in there sometimes. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> there they are in the truck. There, the big one, not the little one. <laughs> There's the truck staff. <laughs> Excellent. I think that was Dale White and Ben Bragg. Uh, Dale White, Doug Jardine, Doug Jardine and Ben Bragg. Well, at least everyone's having fun here tonight anyway. Yeah, well, they're nice and warm inside that truck, I'll tell you. Must be that eerie full moon we were looking at earlier. <laughs> Where'd it go? The Lockview Dragons up 27-8 after that last running touchdown by Matt Babino. Slow this. Work for I speed it up. Yeah, everybody sped up. So a 19-point deficit with 11 minutes and four seconds remaining. I guess they call Doucette Deuce, or they lost the tee off the name bar on that, uh, that tribute jacket there. Everyone's going a little bit batty. Some of the fans are just starting to cheer over the sidelines out of nowhere. I was going to say, they're having a pretty good time. Over <laughs> Halloween's coming around the corner. Ghouls and goblins. And a fumble. That one's recovered by Josh Felix. Pardon me, Sam Evon. Josh Felix is injured. He's 25. Sam Evon. And it was forced by Josh Powell. Well, yeah, he came in to make the tackle, got his hand right on the ball like a number of the Lockview Dragon players have so far tonight. What's that, the sixth turnover or seven? I think that's six now for Auburn. Have to check with our stats people. There it is, six. Palapa. He runs into a group of tacklers. But he does gain about eight yards. To his credit, and there he is helping up uh, Trino Morton. What a nice guy he is. Well, he's, always, he's becoming one of my favorites. Well, 
He's one of my favorites because of the interview he gave Mavs. Uh, it was probably the best one we've had so far oh, this that year. That was good. That was great. That guy's got a, a, a future speaking in, in some capacity. Motivational, maybe, by the way he was going there. Palapo, a great 11 running back. And here he goes again. Oh, good tackle on the outside. Brennan Carr. And Jonathan Kirstead. Yeah, Kirstead uh, really made the nice hit and a nice tackle. Sees the running back and just closes on him and lays the wood to him. Babino. Pressure from the weak side and he's crunched. Flag. Good to see Babino jumping back up. He didn't see that hit coming. Yeah, he took a nice shot there. We call that unnecessary roughness. Unnecessary roughness, hands to the face, number 56, Auburn. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. So we call that to Cameron Grace. Let's see if we can see it here. Uh, yeah, yeah. All over the face mask there. And that time they called it. Saw the lick that was put on Babineau, too, at the end of that play. Babineau, hand off. Falafel. He's going to be down at the five. What a run from Riley Palapo. I thought he was stopped about five yards ago. Oh, that's an awesome hat. Check this out. You see, uh, he goes, he was tackled, I thought right there, but he ran through the arm tackle of uh, Troy Jabaley. Myron Willis finally takes him down around the five. The first and goal. This could put an exclamation mark on this game. Doucette, he is just shy of the touchdown. Or not. From our angle, it looked like he didn't get in. The official much closer. We're gonna call that a touchdown. Well, here you see Doucette. He's got four blockers in front, five actually, and he like gets, gets the, the ball corner. over, eh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he reaches over. Oh, good work in the truck, Steve McLean. Just before the tackler got there in Nathan Henderson. Talking to Doucette before the game, says his favorite player is Cole Beasley, the wide receiver from the Dallas Cowboys. Boy, the Lockview Dragons are putting a licking now on the Auburn Eagles in what was a five-point game. They've scored 21 points, and we've got a flag on the play. Side, number 20, Auburn. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Convert's good. So 21 unanswered now for the Dragons. And the Eagles are running out of time, Cecil. They are, but you've really got to credit the Lockview Dragons. They have they have capitalized on every opportunity they've had here, and that's, as you mentioned earlier, Chris, that's just simply the sign of a real good team. Well, I talked to Mike Korecki this afternoon, and he said to me that he felt like they're capable of making the playoffs. I'll talk a bit more, but first, here's Mavs. Joe, kind of a seek and destroy mission to aim for that pylon. Take us through that last play. Uh, just main goal was trying to get to the edge there with the ball, try to get inside that pylon. Reached out kind of at the line there, and they were coming cracking down on it. Reached out, got in the pylon, and touched You guys are up big. What does this win mean to you guys? Oh, it's huge, huge. <laughs> Extend the season. This was a do or die, and we're getting it done. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> thanks. Best of luck. Thank you. <laughs> guys? Well, thanks, Mavs. Just to finish my thought, Coach Karecki was saying that he felt that the Scotia section of the Division Two was a little bit tougher, and with playoff spots so sparse and at a minimum, that they were... They felt like they were a playoff team, but didn't know if they were going to get in. Do you know what I mean? And that's going to be a Auburn ball. 
but now it looks like they've punched themselves a playoff date. And we'll have to wait for the official schedule to come out, but I think this will be a rematch next week. Well, that's what I was told earlier, and uh, if it is a rematch, I really want to see. I want to see it because you know that Auburn's going to make some adjustments, uh, and one of them is going to have to be uh, putting some stick em on the hand so that they don't turn the ball over all night long. Obviously, they're a better team than that to have a 6-0 record coming into this game. Of course, Rob Morgan, the head coach of the Sackville High Kingfishers, was here earlier. I'm sure there's JL coaches floating around somewhere as well. Spivey, he's going to get eight. And taken to the ground in a pile of tacklers. I did see uh, Todd Sisko uh, from JL, who was here earlier at halftime, and he was talking about this. He says that uh, either way, he said it would be a shame for a 5-2 and two team not to make it into the playoffs. That's how competitive this division is. But it's been such a good regular season. All the, We've seen games from all the divisions. And really, with the exception of maybe one game that got out of hand, it's been really competitive here on East Lake TV. You see Sammy Vong, number 27, who busts right on through there, grabs him by the shirt, flings him down. Spivey unable to find that extra gear we've seen from him throughout the night on that run. Well, I'd, I'd have to say that uh, the offensive backfield for Auburn's got to be tiring because they, they're all going both ways. Punt from Decker. Here's Doucette on the return. Taken down around the 37. Now we've got some pushing and shoving. We'll take a look now at tonight's sounds of the game. You could not pay me to go out and take those hits. Mike Barnaby, and that's our parabolic microphone. That's what picks up all the sound from the field. And there's another one. Certainly gives you a better idea of the, uh, the physicality of this game. Oh, man, I would not do it. Palapo's taken out in the backfield. The ball came loose, but it's going to be whistled that he was down. Good job getting through on the tackle, though, by Lewis Mayo. There into the game is Katie Cox again. Boy, it's a tough game for the boys to play when the girls get out there and start banging around. That's a whole other level of respect for those athletes. And that pass was intended for Katie Cox. It was behind her, though. And that's Gabe Godfrey, the backup quarterback into the game. Not taking any risks on the Lockview sideline. I was going to say it's probably a wise move, I would suspect, for Lockview to uh, take Babineau out. Certainly he'll be huge uh, next week. Okay. Doing a great job with the kicking tonight. Absolutely nowhere to go for DeBron Lewis Mayo. And the Eagles will take over. And they're going to have to score on each possession now to even think about getting back into this. Well, they're going to have to score, and they're going to have to uh, find a way to commit a turnover to get the ball back a second time quickly because uh, five and a half minutes. Oh, and there's another flag goes flying, probably objectionable. What else could it be? Nothing at this point. A lot of talking going on out there between the teams. Objectionable conduct, number 27, Lockview up 10 yards, first down. Well, you can't help a team like that. 
Well, certainly, you, you've got to you know keep your comments to yourself at this point. If you're locked, you you've got a you've got a good handle on this game. You don't want to give Auburn any opportunities without making them read. And you don't want to give them extra motivation if you're going into a playoff game that's week either. Flag down. Willis airs it out. Almost intercepted by Brett Howard. As he and Tynes were matching speed down the field. We'll see what the flag is. Preliminary calls offsides on Auburn, so it's probably one of those wide receivers who broke the plane a little too soon. Now finding out if they want first and 15 or second and 10. Offside, number two, Auburn. That penalty is declined. Second down. Here's your answer. Defensive captain Jonathan Cox making the call on that one. He's had a fantastic game here tonight as the great 12 safety. I'm going to say I'm surprised at, at Lockview. They really have done a fine job, like I said, capitalizing on every opportunity. Spivey runs into one of his blockers and is taken down well behind the line of scrimmage. He ran right into Arian Goodell. <clears throat> I'm thinking that uh, Auburn is going to go for it. Now I see that they're sending on uh, members of the punt team. It would be difficult. It would be third down and about 16. So I guess they are making the right move. But in, uh, like third and 15 or 16, certainly not a situation where you would even consider a, a fake. Oh, very nearly blocked. It's going to roll almost out of bounds. Doucette is taken down by a slide. And there will be a flag on number 56, Cameron Grace. And if you're Auburn, you certainly don't want to risk any suspensions or injuries or anything foolish as we get close to the end. I, I don't recognize. No yards, number 56. That's a five-yard penalty, first down. I don't recognize this type of uh, payback football, you know, I'll call it for lack of a better phrase. Uh, football is designed to be played very, very physically, very tough, but very clean. And I don't like these extra pushes out of bounds and, and those types of things. That's not the way the game's designed to be played. Yeah, I said it. Five yards, linebackers! <laughs> Dropping back to pass is Godfrey. Complete. And the whistle goes as Palapo will make the reception and hang on. And for getting your starters out, he might be one guy you want to think about taking off the field as well. I was going to say, quite honestly, I'm surprised to see him and a few other players uh, still in the lineup at this point. You see, they set up the screen. But that time, much better job by the Auburn defenders led by Chase Tynes and uh, shutting it down. Gabe Godfrey on second and 11. Hands off. Guapo looking for an opening. Nice cut. Uh, he'll be taken down at the 43. Maybe spotted at the 44, but still five yards from a first down. Punt team taking the field for the Dragons. Punt lands at the 50. It's going to be a face masking call right in front of us on the return for Lewis Mayo. Unnecessary roughness, face mask, lock view, 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. 
Well, let's see how good Steve McLean is if he got this replay. Well, that's a, just challenging him like that. Yeah, well, oh, he wouldn't do it to you or I? You know he would. Steve McLean will throw you under the bus any chance he gets. <laughs> All right, you're going to see the player get his hand around the back of the helmet, not the face mask. That was not a face mask. You can call it, you can call it, you can call it unnecessary roughness if you want, but he never touched a face mask to get the back of the helmet. Times incomplete. Oh, now he's got multiple angles. Yeah, Way to challenge okay, another him. look. Now, see, does he hit the face mask? No, never touched the face mask. And I can't wait for people to see that in stripes. Well, we've got a referee in front of us in Barry DeBay, and he just mouthed to me, he said, anywhere up on the helmet like that is a face mask. Yeah, well, then they should call it helmet instead of face mask. <laughs> Cecil Wright, champion of officials. <laughs> Over the middle, Willis, times on the reception. And he will be down about three yards shy of a first down. And Chase walking very gingerly. You know he's got to be tired. And, you know, personally, I take him out because uh, they do have uh, another game next week. Uh, he's got to be exhausted, and that's when injuries Offside. happen. Offside. Number 80, Auburn, back five yards. Repeat, second down. He's been playing both ways the entire game. You know what, though? They tried to bring him off on the last punt, and he yelled at them and said, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, well. But sometimes you do need to protect the players from themselves because they're competitors. Exactly. You don't want to make the decision, put it in the hands of the player because you know what he's going to say. <laughs> you know what? And I... It's a, it's a conversation that we have longer than for here tonight. Nice run from DeBron Lewis Mayo, then lowered the shoulder into the tackle. Watch his hit. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I don't have number 33 either. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry to number 33 and his family, we don't have you on the roster that was on the to us but good job getting in there number 33 <laughs> but I was going to say before that run that it's a conversation that is interesting in sports because we value toughness and staying in when you're hurt and all this stuff but then again you know you need to protect players sometimes as well so it really is a fine line and it's Maybe a conversation we can have on Sports Talk Friday nights well, on Eastlink TV at 5.30. Especially when players are, are going both ways. They're seeing double duty. They're playing special teams. They don't really get an opportunity to, to catch their breath except for uh, when they're in the huddle waiting for the play to be called. Second and five for the Auburn Eagles. So now the question becomes, Cecil, for the Lockview Dragons, as there's a short completion there, and it's going to be a first down for Williams. Actually, he's going to get lots more. But now the question becomes for Lockview, you put so much energy into winning this game and getting into the playoffs. How do you recover and come back next week with the same amount of intensity? Well, especially you lost another key player. Uh, their, their linebacker, Alex Pickram, senior, uh, a leader, good hitter, one of the defensive leaders of that defense. You know, it, it's going to be tough. Uh, if they have to play Auburn again, which it looks like they're going to have to, it's going to be hard to duplicate this effort. Willis, another short pass for Williams. He's down at the 15. We saw a shot of Shane Taylor on the bench as well. He was another player that was helped off earlier tonight. So we're inside a minute remaining. Lockview will finish with a 5-2 tie in records with JL. And then we just had a player go down like he was hit with a sniper. 
So I don't know if there's some cramping or something going on with one of the lock, lock few players, but he just went down hard. That looks like a cramp there. Yeah. Dakota Nicholson. You see it here. I saw it happen on the screen. He was walking. Everything was fine. Yeah, he's cramping up. A lot of coaches over in those stands. I wish one of those Auburn players would take a knee. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if our, our audience can hear it, but there are some of the fans over there. <laughs> uh, exhorting the Auburn players to take a knee, and they just are having none of it. Well, it's just getting a little bit ridiculous right now. But. Looks like Dakota Nickerson is gonna be all right. He's gonna get a hand off and take a well-deserved rest. You mentioned he was a good baseball player. So he's yes. a little, uh, just curious uh, if you can remember what association he's playing for. Or? I think what he played, his position was? I think he played for uh, the Tri-County Rangers, uh, if memory serves me correctly, and he played uh, a variety of positions, uh, third base, and I think he even pitched a little bit, uh, if memory serves me correctly. And it, don't you really, everyone has to be a pitcher on your team nowadays. They have a pitch Pretty count on, on all the young baseball players. Pretty much, especially in, in tournament play. Yeah. And I'm glad to see him walking on. Uh, under his own screen. Willis airs that out toward the end zone. It's going to fall incomplete. That was incomplete to Chase Tynes. So the perfect season has come to an end for the Auburn Eagles. But I think we talked about it maybe even last week with the Central Kings game and the uh, Northeast Kings game that if you're gonna lose, you might as well do it in the regular season and get it out of the way. Exactly, you don't want that loss to be the one that ends your season. And see, so I'll say right now, it's probably because he's wearing that Patriots hat. You have to be like that. Huh? You opened it up in the first quarter and I brought it home. That's what all good <laughs> comedians do. Incomplete pass in the end zone. And that's gonna do it. So that pass is incomplete on third down, a turnover on downs. And they will send out the offense to take the knee. Well, I don't think that uh, if you had asked the Lockview coach if he'd be happy with shutting out Auburn Drive in the second half of this key game, I think he'd be pretty ecstatic. Well, you know what? They knew they were in for a battle coming in. I think they were confident that they could win the game. I think you always have to be confident you can win the game, especially if you're the head coach. You definitely don't want to let any doubt creep into your game plan. But boy, they certainly put an exclamation point on this one. And they're riding high heading into the playoff round next week. Pickram chant going on. I didn't know what that was for a little bit. Well, he's he got injured. Um, like I said, he's a, their defensive leader, their uh, their starting linebacker, and inspirational leader, and uh, that just proves the high esteem that he's held in with his teammates.
Auburn Eagles know they've got more on their plate. They watch this little celebration. And here's the play of the game. One of a couple of touchdowns by running back Riley Palapo. Oh, uh, this young man has made a believer of me. He uh, certainly knows how to follow his blockers. Got great speed to the outside. Good cutback ability. Very, very nice halfback. And he did such a great job on his first interview. We're going to let him try another. All right. Here's Mavs Gillis. Two, touch, two touchdowns on the game as you get congratulated by your teammates. What does this win mean for you guys now that your season continues? Uh, it means that we go straight to the playoffs. And we got this one for our seniors because they worked hard. We have a big senior class. And Pickram, our uh, captain, he's our... He's our best player right there. What adjustments you guys got to make moving forward, and what's going to be in for this week of practice? Uh, we got to better prepare for the outside run on defense and uh, just keep up our stellar play on the offensive line. Of course, you were the guy carrying the ball, but there was a couple guys in front of you throwing some blocks, and you told me you want to give some shout-outs to your offensive line. Yeah, I'd love to give a shout-out to my uh, right tackle, Liam McCormick, my center, uh, Horsey, my right guard, uh, Daniel, Murney, my left guard, and Sam Cox. He's great. Yeah. Riley, best of luck in the playoffs. Maybe we'll see you guys in the Division II final. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Riley Pillipel, he is our player of the game. You can go celebrate with your teammates and actually shake hands as well. Our East next East Link TV sports broadcast on Friday night. It's QMJHL Friday Night Hockey from Center 200. The Valdor Foyer is in town to take on the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. The Rona Rink Camp at 6.30. The puck drop at 7. And then on Monday night, it's our first look at high school hockey from the Yarmouth Mariner Center. It's Digby taking on Yarmouth. That is at 7 p.m. Well, for Chris Abbott, uh, Cecil Wright, and our entire East Lake TV crew, I'm Mavs Gillis. Lucky wins 34 to 8 over Auburn here at Bedford.